Hi, Drew here. Uh, today we're going to talk about usage rights and uh, working as a freelance illustrator or designer and, and kind of the, uh, the concerns that uh, come up when you're, when you're dealing with clients. Um, the example of, uh, of usage rights, so, so what, what are they? It's, it's actually the, the right to reproduce something. Okay? Uh, I'm going to use an example of children's book illustrators because I think it's really, uh, it, it helps and hopefully it'll, it'll kind of filter into other fields as well. Uh, a lot of children's book illustrators work digital, but some of a large chunk still still work traditionally. And um, when you're hired to to illustrate a book, and the publisher comes to you with the manuscript, and and you know you you get your your assignment, you create paintings, right? Some illustrators still use gouache, markers, mixed media, uh, watercolor, and what they actually are selling to their client is not the paintings themselves. Okay, so you create this beautiful two-page spread and it's, you know, it works really, really well. It has, you know, bright, vibrant colors and you spend hours in this meticulous, like, uh, you know, uh, state of, of creation. And, and at the end of it, the painting does not then belong to the publisher. Okay, what the publisher owns is the right to reproduce that painting. Okay. Um, it's the same exact thing if you design a logo for a coffee company, right? Um, you are designing the brand, the identity, but the company, and, and if you're working digitally, this sort of, you know, kind of becomes really ethereal and kind of goes away. They don't own a physical thing. They own the rights to an image, okay? Um, and so that's a tough thing to understand um, initially, right? Because it's like, well, how does you own rights? Well, yeah, you, you, you own rights. You own something that's very abstract and doesn't actually exist. Um, so, uh, translating this back here, let's, let's take a look at um, why, why are usage rights important? Um, the reason they're important is because uh, you in the beginning, and this is, this, I, I do say you because you're the one either writing the contract or agreeing to the contract, so you as the illustrator, you as the designer, um, get to determine um, how this thing is going to be used. Um, and that may sound like, well, what if they're writing the contract for me? You know, I don't get to determine what the terms of those contracts are. It, and, and actually, it's, that's not true. You do. You could walk away from it. Um, walking away and saying no is a very powerful thing. It's a completely, you know, we could do another video on just the, the power of saying no alone. If you look at John Acuff's book, um, I think it was uh, Quitter. I think it was Quitter. Um, he talks about uh, the ability to say no is a, a huge asset to any kind of creative profession. Um, it allows you to define your terms a little bit better. So um, one of those terms is usage rights. And so you're agreeing to this contract, or if it's a small, you know, small time thing, you might actually be writing the contract, right? Um, I'm using uh, chapters two and three out of here are really good. This is the Graphic Artist Guild Pricing and Ethical Guidelines book. It just explains usage rights in in great detail. I think I've got the 2013 edition. It's the 14th edition of this one. Really good uh, resource. Um, they tend to publish it every few years. I'm not sure. Um, they got to be coming close to a cycle here. But um, okay, so usage rights. Uh, it, let's take it a for instance. A lot of times, uh, um, I think it's helpful to kind of look at you know like a, a hypothetical story. So let's say you you are working for uh, a company who owns several. Uh, laundromats in, I don't know, Canton, Ohio, or something like that, and they want you to design a mascot, okay? Seems like kind of a, a, a cheesy thing, but they want a, a, a beaver with a cape and a top hat. I don't know, something like that. Um, and so you're going to do either like an illustration or you're going to do a, you know, like more of a graphical logo type flat approach, and, um, and this thing hasn't existed before, right? And so you're creating it. Well, before you start creating it, you may have some great ideas. You may know this is right up my alley. I love, you know, beavers with top hats and capes. This is my thing. I went to college thinking that's what I was going to do. Um, and so you're really excited about it. And it's tempting to just like do, create, make the thing, right? Because that's what, that's what you're kind of, you're trained to do as an, an illustrator, designer, as an artist. Um, but you need to take a step back and define early on how those, um, how that image is going to be used. Okay, and so you're gonna, you, you define the region that that, that image is, is used in. Um, so you might just say North America, right? Um, you define the uh, format that that image is used in. So it would be print, right, for, for this startup. They're going to do, you know, signage. That's a print. Um, they're going to do, you know, 
uh, flyers to let the neighborhoods know in Canton that there's a new laundromat opening up and it's got this beaver as a mascot. Um, and so they're going to use it in a couple different ways. And so you define that early on and for, for how long, right? So you say, I don't know, for five or 10 years or something like that. Um, I would, even if it's a really long term, like 10 years, I would, I would go with the long term and define an end to it rather than saying in perpetuity, in perpetuity, right? For the rest of time, right? Because that gets, that gets a little bit too open. You want to still control. This is still, still your image. You get to, you get to determine how it's used. Um, so they, and the more of those things that you stipulate, the longer the terms, the bigger the, the, um, the range of those terms, um, that's, that's what they're paying for. And so the image, the more people it gets in front of, the more value it become, valuable it becomes. And so that's where the cost of the image comes from and not from the time, not from the hourly time that you created it. Right. Um, every artist works differently. And if I gave this assignment to somebody fresh out of college, it might take two weeks. If I gave this assignment to somebody who's been doing it for 30 years, it might take two days. It might take one day. It might take a couple hours. That's not important, right? They're not paying you for your time that it takes to create it. They're paying you for your training. They're paying you for your, um, your ability to communicate, your ability to, to work with them. And so it's it's not an hourly thing. We gotta get that hourly thing out of our heads, okay? That comes into play later, and we can help. That can help us kind of determine what to charge, um, you know, for 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 more um, definable work. But for something where you're just sort of generating ideas and, and creating something that didn't exist before, it's not a it's not an hourly thing. It's different for everybody. But the usage rights, the rights to to the image, those are the things that you can control. So let's just say with our with our um, our laundromat example, um, they come back five years later and they say, well, we're really, you know, we're growing. We're, we're growing all over North America. We've got chains in a bunch of different states. And um, we really think it would be really uh, beneficial. Marketing, we brought in a marketing consultant. They said, you know, that mascot would really make a great little um, plushie doll, right? A little stuffed animal type of thing that you can, um, you know, sell to the kids as they're waiting. You can have it in the vending machines or whatever. Um, and creates more visibility. That wasn't defined in the early contract, right? That usage of your imagery was not uh, prescribed by the original contract. So they have to come back to you and re-up the contract. They have to um, expand the amount of money they're paying you. It's, it starts to, um, you are retaining control of the main body, the main, the main copyright. Because as, you, as the uh, illustrator, you, can, you own copyright to it as soon as you create it, right? Um, the U.S. Copyright and Patent Law um, determines that that um, or has said that anybody who creates a thing, right, an illustrator or designer creates a um, an image, they own copyright to it as soon as they create it, right? Um, and so you own it. You, and so um, being able to uh, to determine who's using it and where um, is a powerful thing. It keeps it keeps the, your property your property. Okay, so so like think think of the if if this seems goofy and abstract, think of the Little Caesars uh, pizza pizza guy, right? Um, used all over plush dolls, cartoons, comic books, and that's the purpose of a lot of these things. It, they they um, clients a lot of times want their their imagery in front of everybody, in front of um, as many people as will will watch it. Um, so imagery has power; it has value. And it's not just your hourly time, right? That's part of it, but it's actually a really small part of it. Um, if you're designing for a, uh, you know, a company where, let's say, maybe you're doing some illustrations with some pre-existing characters, I'm thinking of like uh, it's getting to be um, uh, at the time of this video, it's starting to be Halloween, and so um, General Mills starts releasing like Boo Berry and Count Chocula and all those uh, cereals. Um, if you're doing some illustrations for for the General Mills company um, on those pre-existing characters you're not going to be able to determine that. You're not going to be able to determine where and how things are being used. It's going to be more of a, um, you're, you're working with our characters. We just want you to put them in different situations. They already own the usage rights because they're, they're their characters. Um, and so you have less control. But it's also like, um, well, why would you have any control? It's like you're posing stuff that already, that already exists or you're using a corporate logo um, that already exists in different situations. And so, um, 
you don't get as much say over that. You don't get as much control because you didn't generate the original copyright. But it is something you have to be aware of. And, and hopefully that gives a, a, a bit of an overview. Again, if you, wanna, if you want more information and a deeper dive on it, um, the Graphic Artist Guild Pric Pricing and Ethical Guidelines um, book, you can get it on Amazon. I think it's around 20, 25 bucks. And uh, it's, a, it's a really good resource because it has templates for contracts and how to talk about this stuff in, in, in writing. Because it's not how artists tend to speak, um, you know, just by, by nature of um, it's more legal, it's more, um, it's more technical, but it's more precise. And it does make sense, and they do a good job of breaking it down. So if you want more on that, go to the, the Graphic Artist Guild. Um, I, think, uh, I do want to do one on uh, a video coming up on, on work for hire because it's another uh, element of this. And essentially, it's, it's working under conditions where you have no rights. So uh, we'll talk about that next time. But uh, thanks for listening.